Okay. Um, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, my, my name is Dr. Kurt Wohler. I'm pleased to uh, join you again tonight with respects to a topic with respects to multiple sclerosis, specifically fatigue and MS uh, and something called mitochondrial dysfunction, which I'll define. There will be a recording of this presentation that will be hosted through Great Plains Laboratory. So greatplainslaboratory.com will have a recording. And there will also be a recording on msrelief.com, which is another educational website with respects to all things related to multiple sclerosis, msrelief.com, which is a place that I also contribute articles to. So this, this presentation will be recorded and found in two different locations. So let's go ahead and get started. And just uh, just to give you a heads up, um, I have been involved in patient education uh, for many years. I also am involved in physician and healthcare practitioner education with respects to complementary medical options for a wide variety of different health disorders. Um, for years, I've worked with people with chronic fatigue, um, autoimmune problems, uh, neurological issues, including MS. I'm also a biomedical expert, or I should say a biomedical specialist uh, in the field of autism spectrum disorders. Uh, I've been doing webinars for parents of autistic kids now for many years through Great Plains. Uh, and what I found actually is that there is a crossover with respect to many of these different conditions when you start looking at things from an integrative medicine standpoint. Integrative medicine is understanding that um, the whole body is involved in a disease process. Um, there is a breakdown of the immune system, of the digestive system, of the detoxification system that can contribute somebody's susceptibility to a particular disorder. And MS is falls in that category. We can look at MS as a neurological disorder, an autoimmune disorder, but we can also look at it um, as a breakdown of different body systems things that are leading towards the potential of developing multiple sclerosis. So I've been involved in education now for many years. Um, I've also been involved in availing myself online to um, not only parents with autistic kids, but individuals with multiple sclerosis who are looking for further input with respects to their health. This particular website, askthedoctor-ms.com, is a subscription website that allows you, or if you're a, um, a family member or a friend of a loved one with MS, um, you can join as well. And there's a, there's a forum on this website that allows you to post questions to me on a daily basis if you choose uh, with respects to um, topics related to multiple sclerosis, whether it's dietary intervention, medication, supplements, um, you know, troubleshooting problems, whatever it may be. There's also access to professional health supplements, there's videos, articles, etc. So if that's something that is, is of interest to you, you'd like to be able to interact with a specialist um, and ask questions through your own computer, you can do so through askthedoctor-ms.com. If you also want to find out more information about me in general, then you can go to my main website, which is drwoller.com. And I give presentations around the country. I've written a number of books. Uh, this is also information to hear about my private consulting practice. So again, general information can be found at drwoller.com. <clears throat> okay, so what are we going to talk about tonight? Well, we're going to talk about something called the organic acid test and why it's important um, to your health. I'm going to introduce a concept that I introduced last webinar called the chronic stress response. We'll talk a little bit about fatigue and MS. We'll define what mitochondria is and how to evaluate it, and then talk about some therapy that can be implemented with respects to supplements that support mitochondrial function. Great Plains Laboratory is a cutting-edge laboratory. They've been around for many, many years. I have used them and worked with them for many years in my practice. Um, one of their 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 go-to standby test is the organic acid test. It's a it's a, a urine metabolic assessment that evaluates 
for a wide variety of, of things going on in our body, whether it's from yeast issues or vitamin deficiencies, etc. cetera. Um, Great Plains does accept various insurances for uh, uh, reimbursement. So this is something if you're working with a doctor, um, they can easily order the organic acid test for you, uh, and Great Plains can actually help set up that account uh, and get things processed for you. If you are a patient outside the United States, then the menu of Great Plains Labs are actually available to you uh, to order on your own. So they're a, uh, a very accommodating lab with respects to that. Now, I realize this is a recorded presentation. I highlighted here uh, a very important informative PDF file um, that, that goes into great detail about the organic acid test uh, and actually is brilliantly done. It's, it's very, very uh, well done that you can access right off, the, right off the Internet. So if you go to their website, um, you should be able to find that. But here is the link. I know it's difficult being on a recorded presentation to write all of this down, but I at least wanted to have it there if you are watching this on recording. And so, therefore, you could stop the recording and write this down and then just do an Internet search from there. <clears throat> so... What is the organic acid test? Why have I been using it so long and why is it so important? It really is a first line assessment to evaluate for a variety of metabolic imbalances in the body. Um, I have found it to be incredibly useful to detect yeast and bacterial toxins that are known to contribute to hyperactivity issues in kids, aggressive behavior in certain individuals, and also deplete energy resources in the body. So that certainly can be important for somebody with multiple sclerosis. Um, in, it's also looking specifically at um, energy production in these things called the mitochondria, which I'll explain um, very shortly. And we understand that all of these toxins can have a stressful chemical effect on our body as well. It gives indications with respects to vitamin deficiencies, essential fatty acids imbalances, etc. It's a urine profile, so it's easy to collect as a first morning urine, um, and it's something you do within your own home. You can get the test kit from the lab, from Great Plains. You collect your first morning urine, and then you send the, uh, the test kit um, in a prepackaged envelope back to the lab, and they'll analyze it for you. <clears throat> what are some of the conditions that we typically think about with respects to the organic acid test? Well, there's a wide variety of them. I've used it in patients with fibromyalgia. I've used it in individuals with Alzheimer's, people who have recurrent infections, certainly with kids on the autism spectrum, certainly has a role in um, uh, assessing underlying metabolic and physiological imbalances in individuals with MS and a wide variety of other types of health conditions too. Now, I showed this slide, and I'm actually going to show this slide in each of my webinars that I do with respect to MS. And, and this slide isn't supposed to be something that you memorize, you know, to, to know all the, the nitty-gritty details here. But I think it's important, if we're going to be talking about MS and what are some of the mechanisms involved in the development of multiple sclerosis, and what are some of the things that can be done to help remedy the problem, um, we have to have some under, underlying understanding of how chronic stress can affect our body. And when I talk about chronic stress, I don't just mean, you know, I'm stressed out because I had a busy day, or, you know, the kids have a lot of homework tonight, or I've got a something I have to get done for work tomorrow. Chronic stress can come in multiple forms, from mental emotional stress over the years, to physical stress of things that develop from past injuries, to environmental exposures, to infections, to food sensitivities, to um, chronic viral problems, um, on and on and on. The list goes on and on and on. Because essentially what happens is our body responds to stress, no matter what form it comes in, and it relays it through the brain. That relay information is taken to our organ systems throughout our body, specifically our adrenal glands, and we produce cortisol. Cortisol is a regulating hormone that helps to control inflammation and maintain a, a stable level of organ function in our body. Um, and 
if everything is in balance, everything is working fine. The problem is, is that chronic stress over time will lead to a breakdown in our ability to regulate our blood pressure, a way to regulate inflammation. It will destroy our immune system. It will increase the potential for infection. It will increase the potential for autoimmune reactions that can occur in different areas. It can occur in our joints, our heart, our gut, our brain, and our nervous system. So that, in short, is what is termed the chronic stress response. And as I mentioned in some of the previous webinars, one of the things that I look to do in my practice is evaluate what somebody's, what an individual's cortisol system is doing. <clears throat> one of the reasons people are given prednisone as a medication is to try to decrease inflammation throughout the body. Well, cortisol is a natural anti-inflammatory that we all have in our body that often becomes depleted because of chronic illness. And this slide is really nothing more than just showing a complicated array of different chemicals, but if we were to break it down and just look at what the red arrow is doing, the red arrow is being pulled towards cortisol. And that cortisol is what we call the preferential pathway in the body because cortisol is needed to try to keep every system in our body in balance. And when we're under chronic stress, then essentially this system is out of balance. And then so essentially we can look and say that chronic stress can change and alter um, really every organ system in our body. And certainly when we think about multiple sclerosis, we're thinking about what's going on in the nervous system. Okay, So our ability to control inflammation, control nervous system function, uh, you know, control our body's ability to detox, control you know, the, the metabolism of fat and protein is all linked back to these underlying body systems that relate to how our brain perceives stress and how our body perceives stress. <clears throat> this slide here is important, and this will be something that I will go into greater detail in, in other webinars. Um, but one of the things that is happening in MS is that individuals with MS are having a difficult time with histamine. We think of histamine as, you know, you go to the drugstore and you get, uh, you get an over-the-counter antihistamine medication because you got an allergy, you know, itchy eyes, runny nose. But there's also another type of histamine called histamine 2. And histamine 2 is critically important for our, our brain and overall immune system. And people with MS often have a deficiency or a broken pathway, if you will, in maintaining normal levels of histamine 2. <clears throat> Let me just go ahead and move on from here. Okay, so there are a tremendous amount of things going on biochemically in the body um, in individuals with MS. If we just take one thing that causes significant disability, that would be fatigue. We know that um, fatigue accounts for you know upwards of 65, 70 percent uh, or more of the disability seen in multiple sclerosis. Um, so it's quite a problem because for many people it's quite debilitating. Well, it turns out that histamine two um, <clears throat> is a major neurochemical in the brain. Okay, so it is regulating other brain chemicals that help maintain a, a normal function. We know that histamine helps to stimulate the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland producing thyroid is critically important for metabolism um, and when people are hypo or low thyroid they're often fatigued. We know that histamine is a stress regulator in the body so if we take that concept back to this chronic stress response that causes a breakdown of these different systems in the body over time we know that histamine can play a role in that. Uh, and it certainly has a lot of other roles, which we'll discuss in further presentations. And then the end result with this is overwhelming fatigue. Now, it turns out that in our cells, we have something called mitochondria. And mitochondria simply are these little energy factories 
that make a tremendous amount of what I call the cell currency that is used by our body to generate um, metabolism when, which could control brain function, could control our muscles, can control our immune system, control our ability to detox toxins, control our respiratory function, our digestive system. If we don't have ATP, if we don't have this energy currency, then our body essentially becomes depleted and we become extremely fatigued. So mitochondria are these little energy factories that are critically important. And within these mitochondria are these chemical reactions that have to be supported nutritionally. So the food that we eat, protein, fat, carbohydrates, all get broken down by our body to provide substrate for these different energy systems. Okay? And it turns out we can also supplement with nutritional supp supplementation to support these pathways as well. It turns out that, and I'll go into other detail in other presentations too, it turns out that a variety of toxins, whether it's environmental toxins, heavy metal toxins, infectious toxins like yeast and bacteria, can negatively influence these different chemicals. So when our body is you know, not in a healthy state, um, when we have gut infections or environmental toxins what, you know, or whatnot, it can affect the way the mitochondria function. This is a section of the organic acid test that's specifically looking at this thing called the Krebs cycle, which is just this little energy wheel, if you will. <clears throat> and as I mentioned before, that you know, eating healthy, getting adequate carbohydrates, you know, um, sugar metabolism, healthy fats, good sources of protein and amino acids is absolutely critical to supply those substrates those those breakdown products, the fuel, if you will, for our cells to function appropriately. And when we eat toxic food, we're not going to produce good energy for our body. When we eat too much of a, a particular food, if you eat too many fats or you overwhelm your body with too many proteins or you overconsume sugar, uh, and simple carbohydrates, then the thing that our system and our body is going to be out of balance as well. So it's all about a balance. Well, you know, if we think about mitochondrial dysfunction in general, um, we could make the case that the vast majority of us could have some problem in our mitochondria based on just the different stressors that we're all exposed to in our society. And certainly anybody with a chronic illness um, could be predisposed to some type of mitochondrial problem because of those exposures as well. We certainly know that environmental chemicals, PCB, pesticides, are a, a major problem these days. Certainly certain areas of the country are going to be more prevalent. Um, I see a lot of people in the Central Valley of California have very high levels of heavy metals. I work with um, individuals around the world um, uh, and I've seen some of the kids that I actually do uh, hair testing for, um, <clears throat> the Philippines, South America, the Middle East, um, to name a few places, are very high in lead. So we know that lead is a toxic exposure that affects the nervous system and affects the mitochondria too. Vaccine reactions have played a role in many people's illnesses. And then there are other things. It could be food allergies and sensitivities, it could be digestive pathogens, bacteria and yeast, the list goes on and on. And this is the whole principle of functional medicine or what we call integrative medicine is to look is to look below the surface, is to not just look at MS and say, oh, it's an autoimmune disease and here's a bunch of drugs. It's to say what is going on in the body that is causing chronic stress that could be contributing to this person's condition or certainly worsening it. And that's where you start looking at the digestive system and foods and toxins, um, et cetera. <clears throat> and the, the bottom line with any kind of chronic illness, and 
multiple sclerosis included, is that there generally tends to be a lot of oxidative stress. A simple way to think about oxidative stress is if you have um, metal that is now exposed to um, water and it gets wet and exposed to air, you eventually develop rust. Or if you cut open an apple and you let it sit on the kitchen counter, it eventually starts to brown, it starts to oxidize. Well, oxidation is the breakdown of cellular tissue in the body. And so the foods that we eat that are high in vitamin C or vitamin E um, are natural antioxidants. We have a chemical in our body called glutathione, which is critically important, and it's a, it's a critically important antioxidant in our cells, often depleted in people with neurological disorders. I see it a lot in autism, seen it in MS, and other chronic health states. So oxidation will eventually lead to premature aging, neurological and cardiovascular diseases. And when we have a lot of oxidative stress, it is going to disrupt how our cells produce energy. <clears throat> One of the things that um, I often implement for people who manifest with chronic states of fatigue um, <clears throat> or you know, who have an organic acid test that shows that their mitochondrial area is not functioning properly is what we call a mitochondrial cocktail. You could think of this as the energy factory cocktail, if you will, in our cells. Carnitine, CoQ10, NADH, malic acid. <clears throat> Um, these are sort of the foundations of a mitochondrial cocktail and can be a worthwhile group of supplements um, if you are an individual with MS to use to just support how these energy factories function at the cell level. Let's look at them a little bit closer. Carnitine um, helps with fat metabolism in the cell. Fat is essential um, for the cell to burn for a greater production of this energy currency. The analogy I, I, I use is if you were to go camping and you wanted to start a campfire, the first thing you would go and do is you'd, you'd gather up some small twigs and dried leaves as kindling because it's going to burn quickly. Well, that kindling is equivalent to sugar. So <clears throat> to get the fire started, you need some sugar or you need some kindling. And that's why many people sometimes feel an increased energy boost when they eat sugar. The problem is, is the sugar gets burned up very quickly and doesn't produce a lot of this energy currency. What do you do with a campfire once you've got the kindling going? Well, you go and get some medium-sized logs that will start to burn um, more quickly as well, but give a longer-lasting burn. And then eventually you throw on larger logs so that the fire has a chance to really burn and you can sit back and enjoy the campfire. Well, those medium size and those large logs would be equivalent to protein and fats. So we actually get more energy production from protein and fat than we do just sugar by itself. But all of it is needed in order to get that campfire going and then to burn long term. Well, it turns out that carnitine is a nutrient that helps to transport fat into our cells that then gets burned through this little energy factory in our cells called mitochondria. And, you know, the dosing range can be quite broad. Um, usually, you know, the, the dosing recommendations you see for carnitine are anywhere between 50 to 100 milligrams per kilogram um, uh, per day. Okay, if you don't know how to figure out your weight in kilograms, you just take your weight in pounds and divide it by 2.2, and that gives you your approximate weight in kilograms. But on average, if you don't want to figure it out, you know, most people, most adults do just fine with 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams of L-carnitine per day. <clears throat> CoQ10 has gotten a lot of press. Um, particularly in the field of cardiovascular health, heart disease, and, and, and heart health. CoQ10 is essential for 
mitochondrial function. It works inside the, the factory. It helps to keep things moving. Um, and a depletion of CoQ10 is significantly detrimental to the way our body produces energy. Um, so if you were to pick up any kind of supplement product that was being touted for heart disease or athletes, um, weightlifters, you're going to find CoQ10. Well, it also is incredibly useful for people who are in a depleted state of fatigue. Um, and so ubiquinol, for example, is, the re is what's called the reduced form or the active form of CoQ10. So I actually prefer ubiquinol as opposed to just straight CoQ10 because um, I think it's going to work quicker and not have to go through a, a conversion step um, inside the body. <clears throat> and again, with CoQ10 or ubiquinol, you know, the general recommendations are 5 to 10 um, milligrams per kilogram, which turns out to be about you know, on average for most adults, um, about 400 milligrams per day. Um, so I'll usually dose it between 250 to 400 milligrams per day. It's not toxic um, and uh, is very useful. NADH, um, something called nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, kind of a mouthful. Um, the bottom line is, is NADH is absolutely essential for energy production inside the cell. Um, the whole mitochondrial energy factory thing doesn't work if you don't have a good supply of NADH. <clears throat> now, NADH was quite popular years ago in the field of chronic fatigue syndrome. Um, many people were using it thinking it was going to cure their chronic fatigue. And, and none of these supplements alone is going to be um, a cure-all or a magic bullet, but they work synergistically together very well. Um, so the typical dosing of NADH for people who are fatigued in a depleted state um, is 5 to 10 milligrams per day is generally what's needed, and then certainly along with the CoQ10 and the carnitine. And then finally, to sort of round things out for you here, is malic acid. <clears throat> now, malic acid um, it's interesting where this fits into, into place. This is part of the what's called the Krebs cycle, this little energy wheel that spins inside our cells. Um, and malic acid is, is critically important to keep that wheel spinning. And when malic acid is depleted, we actually lose a, a reserve for maintaining blood sugar balance to the brain. Um, it turns out that chronic yeast, and I'll go into this in, in further detail in other webinars, chronic yeast from candida can actually cause a block of our cell's ability to access malic acid. So we know that gut problems can contribute to these uh, mitochondrial issues. And so the bottom line for this discussion is that malic acid is, 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 is important for energy production and for adults between 1,000 to 2,000 milligrams per day uh, is an adequate place to start. And then putting all of this together, the L-carnitine, the CoQ10, or I should say ubiquinol, which is the active form of CoQ10, um, <clears throat> the NADH, and the malic acid would make up the foundation of a mitochondrial cocktail. So I would encourage all of you to, um, if you can, um, if you're a patient yourself or if you're a, a family member or a loved one with someone with MS, really seriously look at doing an organic acid test from Great Plains Laboratory um, because there's a tremendous amount of useful information there. Again, if you have further questions, um, would like to interact with me, um, would like for me you know, to, to discuss some things about your health, then a great place to do this is through the member forum of askthedoctor-ms.com. Again, this is a, a monthly service. Uh, it's month to month. There's no long-term contracts. You can, you know, join or cancel, you know, uh, on a month to month basis if you if you like. Um, but there's a tremendous amount of information on this site, and also I can help answer a lot of things for you um, uh, that uh, I think you'll find quite useful. And then again, you know, uh, more information about me. Uh, can be acquired through drwoller.com.
So I know these presentations um, are short. I'm trying to keep them down to you know 30 minutes, you know maybe 40 minutes um, max. Uh, and so I will be back again uh, next month, and we'll expand the topics here with respects to um, integrative medicine, um, specifically with respects to MS and how some of these these issues with respects to metabolism and nutrition and food sensitivities and chronic infections uh, can contribute to uh, multiple sclerosis. Um, thanks everybody for joining me tonight and we will see you next time. Thank you.